From the morning reading, the queues drop on Google, Facebook, and Starbucks. IWM gains. Seven of nine sectors moved higher on Friday. XLE, XLF, and XLU were the strongest sectors, while XLK was the weakest sector. All futures rose 32 cents to close at 43.75. Breath strengthened as advancers led 2.36 to 1 on the New York Stock Exchange and 1.72 to 1 on the NASDAQ. Friday marked an unusual day in market breadth. Due to strength in small cap stocks, the New York Stock Exchange up issues ratio was 70%, yet the S&P was barely positive. On a typical day when 70% of issues rise, the S&P is up by a median of 1.3%. The only days with such lopsided breadth and gain of less than 0.2% in the S&P were in 73, 1231, an 82, a 98, a 2004, and a 2014 date. Very generally, when breadth strong, but the S&P is relatively weak, forward returns were above average, but not strong enough to be considered a factor. Volatility press traders continue to press their bets. Shares outstanding in the major volatility ETFs have increased exponentially over the past month and show no signs of slowing down. In prior years, this has been a warning sign for stocks, but so far it has been failing. The S&P 500 has gone 10 weeks since trading below the prior week's low. This is the longest such streak since 2011 and among the most impressive since 1928. Other times it went for 10 weeks without a lower low. Its returns were modestly negative in the shorter term before improving. And indeed, if you look at perspective, on the S&P, we're up 2.33% for the year and only 1.84% below that record close of last May the 21st. Hello, this is Stephen Harris, a head trader from Falcon Global, where we model best practices for investors, traders, and day traders from entry to exit every trading day. In this daily video, I'll provide my opinion and insights of current market trends, market timing, volatility, and head trust levels for the upcoming day for the key U.S. financial markets. It is 6.53 a.m. Central Time, and I'm recording this in preparation for the market day of April the 25th, 2016. Full disclaimers are at the end of the video, but be aware that this is for educational purposes only and only you are responsible for the investing or trading decisions that you make. So let's go ahead and dive into the morning report. And not much of significance coming in from our Sunday night overnight. Uh, all four broad market indices are down, but just below scratch. And in fact, there's not enough separation from scratch to make any note there. Crude oil down about 0.8%, euro up about a quarter of a percent, bonds up just above scratch, and gold up about a third of a percent. And overseas action, it's been a bit more dynamic, but nothing uh, excessive by any means. China down about half a percent, Hong Kong down about three quarters of a percent, as is Japan. Germany down about half a percent, and United Kingdom down just a little bit more than half a percent. In terms of macroeconomic reports for today in the United States, there's only one new home sales, and that'll come out before the market opens. And looking forward to tomorrow, we have core durable goods, and consumer confidence, and that'll take care of tomorrow. In terms of current market conditions from a volatility perspective, um, short-term VIX down below a 12 again. This is 11.93. SKU also benign. IV percentile across all four indices very, very low. S&P an 8. Russell an 8. NASDAQ a 12. The Dow a 4. So can't hardly get much lower. We did have standard deviation moves put in on Friday on two of the indices, and very curiously, one was up by a standard deviation move with the Russell, and one was down by a standard deviation move in the NASDAQ. So going very different directions there um, on those two indices. Uh, the two cousins, S&P and Dow, both less than a one standard deviation move on a close-to-close -close basis. In terms of, let's go to the charts, and here's the SPX, and what we want, we want that, 
and we're going to use the futures chart. The futures charts give you the best set of information. Oh, here we go. Sorry about the delay. Here we go. The S&P futures chart gives you the most information, though we also like to take a look at times at the SPX because that's the cash market only when all market participants are playing. And that gives us a slightly different read than the futures, which includes the overnight markets. But um, this will give us the most extreme view of the moves. And you notice, obviously, we've had ever since this February low, we referenced this uh, with the morning readings, um, that we have ripped up uh, an amazing amount. If you look at this at a weekly candle, we've never had a weekly candle close below another one in 10 weeks. And during that period also, we've ripped all the way down from being about 13 to 14% down um, from the highs all the way to a point now that we're within 2% of the all-time high last May. So those are the resistance zones that we're playing with right now. And you see this recent resistance that was hit last week and gave us a swing high, you know, not coincidentally, right here, back here where we had, you know, all this other resistance so this is basically a triple top at least um and really more um, appropriately probably called a channel top very long term channel top and uh, given that we've had so many touches in this area um and really it is an area so keep that in mind when we come up into this area about 2105 which is where we've touched recently 2134 is the all-time high that was set on very low volume just before the memorial day weekend last year well this whole area is just that an area of about 30 35 40 points that would be considered um anything in that area would not be significant to touch it's a break of this entire zone that we need to watch for so uh, we may get some probing action up into this area that then fails uh, and maybe fails another time or two before we actually power through um, so there's a lot of resistance up in this um, in, in this area again using that word over and over again but that does uh, have the purpose of reinforcing that this is not a point don't get excited just because we get to oh my gosh we're up here we broke this high and you know we're at 2110 and a quarter and, you know we broke out well not really not when you have a channel top with a whole bunch of similar highs it is just that an area so let's go ahead and look at the Dow we made enough of that on the Dow obviously very much the same picture this most recent probe did come up above this swing area but we're up in you know these areas here still looking at a channel top with this one little bump that went and probed just before Memorial Day just a little higher but all the rest of the channel top areas are in this similar zone around 18,100 on the Dow in terms of NASDAQ of course NASDAQ had some ugly action last week that was really kind of going uh, in a pronounced way you know um, significantly different than say the Russell where we normally see these two growth oriented indices going in kind of similar directions where well, you had the Russell with an up move by a more than a standard deviation move while the Nasdaq on Friday lost more remember this candle here is from Sunday night in terms of where are we going from here well all four of these indices are up against significant resistance and as a result uh, the pot odds for a move up are, are tough fighting and at the same time you have to represent that um, so much of the action of late has been extremely bullish and we'll get to the daily report in just a moment with the various market timing signals and so forth but you have to respect that we're up against a backdrop where most of the signals on the short to intermediate term are extremely and strongly bullish and yet at the same time we're up against so much resistance so if we look at bonds you know this would seem to indicate that uh, equities could be going higher we seem to be coming down towards the um, 
an area where we could break out of the bottom of the cloud and if we break out to the bottom of the cloud surely that means that equities at the same time were going up when we look at the VIX and the volatility products well while we popped up a little bit that's been ebbing back down and basically right now looks to be setting up a lower high so this could be setting up also to continue to fall and if that continues to fall we probably see the equities going higher and just for interest uh, we'll take a look at gold and this has been a very sloppy um, pattern here where we had the diagonal breakout which proved um, itself and confirmed itself but then didn't make a higher high and then you know went back into this slop of sideways action so at this point this whole pattern here basically turns into a sideways consolidation pattern and we have to look for something of a breakout this is probably practically a squeeze pattern at this point on the daily uh, we could look at a different chart to confirm that but once we see a breakout either below these lows or below, above these um, relative highs here we could see another significant move by gold but you kind of probably have to wait to see that breakout to know is it going to truly go probabilities would be that it would continue in the direction that it was going prior to this sideways pattern so probably stalking a long entry and, and it's worth noting that IBD has GLD as one of its leaderboard participants right now so they certainly are bullish on this and uh, having that committee put that on the leaderboard list so you could be stalking an entry perhaps take a low risk defined risk kind of entry with options or something like that um, but gold can be very volatile so this is definitely a very very speculative play that's probably enough on the charts let's go ahead and go to the daily report and we continue to see a bit of a mix on the daily report from our three market timing signals we have the one from IBD that it's deteriorated of, of as of last week to uptrend under pressure though accumulation distribution scores on both the Nasdaq and the S&P are still pretty solid at a B minus and a B GMI index is holding at a five out of six but that's still a buy signal decision point scoreboards our third market timing signal had that sell signal come in on the Nasdaq on the 21st but you see the rest of the short-term signals are all still bullish as are all the intermediate term and then on the long term we got mixed with half the signals as bullish and half the signals as bearish so very much a market in transition in a very broad range we continue to say that and we've said that for days and days um, but that's where we are and until we get really true uh, stack between all the different time frames and alignment um, we still probably will be in the chart pattern of that transition zone and in terms of position sizing opinion with that uh, uptrend under pressure you have your portfolio position sizing opinion at a reduced 50 percent volatility based on um, uh, the active trader based on volatility metrics is at a 75 to 100 percent so um, could be considered reduced as well in terms of intermediate term market posture we're very strongly bullish and we also have we should note a strongly bullish sentiment line it's also of an upper reversal zone now remember when we talk about sentiment we usually use most of our sentiment lines down further in the daily report um, but the one that's associated with this intermediate term market posture uh, the fact that it's in the upper reversal zone is not a reversal signal in itself it is what we always caution with sentiment a sign that we should be watching for reversal signals on the chart watch the price action but um, this is very strongly bullish as well and you see all four of the intermediate term market postures are up over 90 so no worries there as of yet the strength of the trend is also um, strongly bullish it's up over 80 now so you have both this strong bullish sentiment line and you have 
a strong bull trend up over 80 as well and you see that uh, with respect to this signal this can stay up over 80 for very very long periods of time these are weekly candles i don't show the time frame on this it doesn't cut real well but um for the cut and paste but these are weekly candles so this is these are months in which this candle uh, which this indicator was showing above 80 and a very strong bull trend. So that's also worth noting. So when you put all this together, you have, you know, some warning signs, especially this uptrend under pressure. And we can come down here and look for the other warning signs. We have this volatility ratio warning. We have a very high distribution day count. NASDAQ's now gone to a six, and the S&P's also in a warning status in terms of distribution days. In the last 30, we've had five on the S&P. Um, though everything else is pretty much benign, you do have, from the sentiment standpoint, medium-term risk is somewhat elevated on stocks. And then we've got a number of ETFs here that also have very high sentiment where we're on the watch for reversal patterns. In terms of special opinions, when it comes to option income strategies, cover call strategies, and put selling, all three of the systems are within acceptable thresholds to initiate new positions, including for novice traders. We do have something of a, a little bit elevated, our first level of hedge warning status. We're up to level one. Um, this happened last week. We've gone to that first level of caution, and that was due to this uptrend under pressure coming back into play. So um, just kind of keep that in mind. If you're a novice trader, your position size should probably be somewhat reduced, and um, you might want to go a bit more defensive than, um, than others when it comes to cover call strategies and put selling. Um, overall, we still are sitting with the same ratio, one in the money for every two out of the money strikes. But um, you might want to um, spread that out to where maybe you've got one in the money, one at the money, one out of the money if you're a novice trader or if you think that um, you know it's a higher beta position. We also have this one in the money for every two out of the money. I should say one low beta for one every two out of the um, high beta positions. Um, so that mix may also be, you know, perhaps um, uh, if you're a more novice trader or a smaller capital trader that you might want to go just a bit more defensive than what's being called for in the overall um, opinion at this point. Um, put selling, consider defined risk positions and position size as always in the scale that you're willing to own. In terms of fear and greed index, I'll come down here and finish the rest of the sentiment indicators. You can see we're pretty high. We're not quite in the upper quartile, but just one tick away. And then also in the intermediate term market posture by individual ETF. There's a long list here. So this is uh, generally a sign of a fairly healthy market. A lot of healing has taken place since early February. And we have both high beta and defensive ETFs represented here. So fairly broad mix still present. In terms of sector specific, you can see uh, staples, utilities, and technology, which are the three defensive ones, were the ones that have the, the worst um, market postures across the three time frames right now. So kind of interesting there. That would seem to tell us that there's rotation going from the more defensive sectors, the ones that are more about, you know, making a dividend into higher beta areas. At the same time, we have this uptrend under pressure and these other warnings coming into play. So a little bit of a sloppy um, kind of mix of information coming in right now. Percent change, you see energy, financials, um, utilities were, were there. Um, so utilities did recover somewhat on Friday compared to earlier in the week. And on our relative rotation graph, also kind of a mixed bag here. We do have several participants. We have the, um, the Venture Composite Index, Amex Composite, TSX Composite, that are up into this upper quadrant. But notice the direction of the tails here. They're kind of horizontal 
or even falling. So there's really nothing that is, um, you know, uh, you know, making a strong case for itself. Perhaps this one right here, the, by virtue of the fact that it's so far up into the upper right-hand corner, which is um, the the most robust area, and yet at the same time, it um, it's not. You know, I think we probably would prefer to see it kind of going like this um, up into this area. But still, that that certainly represents itself better than, say, these two, which have gone into the upper right quadrant, but are seemingly tailing off at this point. So um, something to keep in mind. So we kind of get these mixed signals today with respect to, you know, is the market strongly bullish or is it, you know, in a cautionary stance? And we got the hedge warning status at level one and we have some significantly important warnings coming in from our various metrics and yet at the same time other areas could make a strong case that this is um, setting itself up for just another continuation pattern and to go for the all-time high so um, part of this is that the bulls and the bears are in a big big fight right now and um, until we have a breakout one side or another we'll start to see more and more of these kind of patterns where you get these mixed signals as this fight continues. So we'll continue to watch and see how this develops. Um, but we're in a very important place in the intermediate term charts at this point. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. We've certainly hit our time limit that we uh, kind of self-impose on ourselves. And I'll scroll through this information. If you see something of interest, just hit the pause button, go to the hyperlink, get additional information. We certainly like it when you um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's free. Uh, and that also gives you access to some of the YouTube tools, including the, the notice that comes when you are a subscriber to the YouTube channel. You get notice of when the content has been posted. Disclaimers, as always, hit the pause button if you need more time to review the disclaimers. Also note at the bottom here is a hyperlink that takes you to the full set of disclosures. We'll see you back here tomorrow morning for the Falcon Global Market Preview. Good trading.